Good morning. There is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer. No disease that enough love will not heal. No wall that enough love will not throw down. No sin that enough love will not redeem. If only you could love enough, you would be the happiest, most powerful person in the world. Words from Emmett Fox. And I ask you individually this morning, has anyone wronged you? Has anyone talked about you in a very negative way? and even told a few lies on you and about you? Has someone mistreated you to the place that you decided this has gone far enough, can't take any more? It's to the place now that I don't think I can forgive them, and I know I can't forget them. I'm asking you again this morning to say to yourselves, those that you have called seeming enemies, dear enemy, I love you. Not because I really want to, but I love you because I have to. And I have to because my feelings about you, the hate and the resentment and all of that that has been buried subconsciously will not hurt you. It will only hurt me. And P.S. Nobody is worth your making yourself sick in your bodies or in your pocketbook. They are not worth it. So I stand here again with part two of this lesson, Dear Enemy, I Love You, to say to you, get it together, not for them, but for yourself. If you are still experiencing challenges in your body, it's there because you have not forgiven. And sometimes we pretend that we don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, we do. Because many times it comes just as plain as day. The person will show up or call and you get another chance to act ugly and mean and hateful. Probably hang up. If you don't hang up, you would like to hang up. You hurting yourself, people. Please do something about it. I'm sure I heard from some people, some I haven't heard from, don't need to, it's okay. But they tell me that from our lesson last Sunday, part one, that something happened in our bodies. What we call chemicalization took place. And as you begin to release 
And as you begin to love, you begin to have some action and some reaction in your body. Thank God for it because that's healing. You begin to receive blessings that were just waiting for you to forgive and forget all of that that happened to you 900 years ago. We say it here and we say it often. There is no past. There is no future. There is only the now. Please stop living in the past. It's over. It was only there to bring you to where you are now. It was only there to teach you a lesson. It was only there to give you a blessing. Now that you've received your lessons are your lesson and your blessing are blessings, release it and move on to another level. There's something bigger and better for you. The best is yet to come when you let go of what was. We discovered last Sunday that in order to do this, now I want you to know, I realize this is not a small journey I'm inviting you on. And I think I said to you last week that the lesson was really my lesson. I was preaching to me, and I worked on it this week, and I know that I have let go some things that I needed to let go. You sit there, and you're so beautiful, and you look up here, and you think ministers don't go through what I go through. You've never been so wrong in your life. We go through much more than you go through because we got so many other things to go through in order to make it whatever it is. We discovered something. We discovered in order to move this forgiveness through our bodies, through our world, and through our affairs, that there is a platform. And we call it the forgiveness platform. And we talked about it last week. We said with every platform, there are planks. There are planks. If you look on your bulletin, please, Last Sunday, we went into detail with planks one, two, and three. What did we say about plank one? What is plank one? Giving up of something. Forgiveness means to give for, to give love for hate, to give truth for error. And you can go on and on, always remembering that you are giving up of something in order to gain something that is waiting for you. And the second plank, we talked about it at length. What is it? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Your prayer statement, Father, forgive them. And this is so true. Because if they knew what they were doing, I don't think they would do it. But by you praying this prayer as often as you feel like it, it will change things in your life. And the third one said, all men are brothers. What did it say? All men are brothers. And so today we begin with number four. And number four is saying, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus gave only two commandments. Jesus said, love God and love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor, you will not. Hurt your neighbor, 
You will not say ugly things about your neighbor. You will not kill your neighbor. You will not do anything that the Ten Commandments say is wrong. All Ten Commandments are wrapped up in this one. I love you because you are my neighbor. And when I say this, sometimes I kind of wonder, I love my neighbor as I love myself. Some of us, it appears that some of us, you know what I'm going to say? Say it. Don't love ourselves. It appears that we do not love ourselves. I won't dwell on that. <laughs> Jesus said, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about when I say to you, love your neighbor as yourself. He gave us a parable, and we call it the parable of the good Samaritan. You remember that? Oh, it's wonderful. Got to share it again because we're, he is giving us the story, a story of what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, they were always questioning Jesus. I can understand that because they didn't understand what made him tick. And after all their questioning, they still didn't understand what made Jesus, Jesus. And there was a day of questioning, and there was a lawyer in the crowd. And the great lawyer said, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Since you are a lawyer, what is written in the law? And the lawyer said, It is written, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said, Thou hast answered right. Then do it, and you'll find that you can live forever. Well, the lawyer thought to himself, now, I'm a lawyer. I ain't going to let you get away that easy. So, the lawyer, you know how intellect has to let you know. I've been to school, and I got a BBB and a TTT and a <laughs> SPW. So the lawyer says, wait just a minute. You Tell me, who is my neighbor? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why people mess with people that's already connected and already know everything that you're going to ask even before you ask. I don't understand that. And certainly since they don't understand up front, I can understand them asking you one time. But when you're able to give the answer, give it intelligently and correctly, why would you come back if you're just stupid? Jesus said, a certain man went from Jerusalem to Jericho. In order to get from Jerusalem to Jericho, they had to travel on the road, you know. And the road was known to have thieves and everything else on them. And this man walked into all of these thieves, and they took care of the business. They were doing according to their level. They beat him up, they robbed him, they threw him over on the side of the road, half dead. Well, the priest came by. He's going somewhere too. And he looked over and he saw the man. 
And he looked at the man half dead. And now the Bible didn't say this. And said, I bless you. I'm not going to say what else I think the, the, the priest said. But anyway, the priest then went on the other side of the road and went on where he was going. Left the man half dead. Then a Levite came by. And he saw a half dead man. And he had his little thoughts and his little whatever he went through. And he went on the other side of the road and went on where he was going. Then Jesus said, a Samaritan came along and he saw the man and he went over to the man and gave him a treatment, did what he had it to do, picked the man up, put him on the donkey and led him to an inn that was not far away. When he got to the inn, he said to the innkeeper, I want you to take care of this man. I want you to feed him. I want you to change his clothes. I want you to give him a place to stay. I want you to do whatever is needed at this time for this man. I'm giving you some money, but if this is not enough money, I'll be back soon and I will give you whatever the charges are for this man. Just promise me that you'll take care of it. Now, which one of these three men was a neighbor to this man? The Samaritan. That's how I got the name, Good Samaritan. Then Jesus said to the lawyer, now that you understand, I hope, what a neighbor is, go and do what I have just shared with you. This parable points out that the true neighbor is whomever you come upon. Now, it's not the person that lives upstairs, not the person that lives next door, not the person that lives in the same building on the first floor and you on the second floor. In Mississippi, we speak, you know, we say, good morning, neighbor. Well, you're up north, you don't even speak. But if you did speak, you would probably say, hello, neighbor. That's not the kind of neighbor I'm talking about. We're going to say it again. This parable points out that the true neighbor is whomever you come upon, whomever you meet first, wherever you meet him, wherever anyone is in need, he is your neighbor. Does that tear up your world? I hope so. So when you get out of here, you will know that if you walk out of this service and there is one of God's children in need or whatever, not only do you pray with them, and I didn't say pray for them, not only do you pray with them, but if there is something that is needed that you can assist at that particular time, that person becomes your neighbor. From the standpoint of our spiritual life, who is our neighbor? The thing that is closest to us is our neighbor spiritually. Get this, the concept or idea in the mind which we must first receive when we come out of the secret place of your prayer time. 
that thought in the mind which attracts us first and holds our attention longest is our neighbor, mentally speaking. As you go back and forth in your mind, in your own mind, and I know that this has happened to many of you, you will find certain ideals and dreams and projects that have fallen among the thieves. Wonder, do you know what I'm saying? You have an idea. All ideas come from God. But you made a big mistake. You told somebody. And that somebody might be the very person that will say to you, you can't do it, it's never been done, you are a woman, you're crazy for trying it, don't try it, you're going to be, and they go on forever. Now, I haven't asked them anything about what they thought about the idea. I just shared it with them, which was a big mistake. And when it falls among the thieves, uh, when you get it back, it's stripped of everything that God has given you to do and do I need to tell you what happens to the idea? Huh? I don't need to tell you that. Been stripped of all the vitality that was in the idea, been wounded and everything else. What will you do? What will you do? Will you pass by on the other side? Or will you stop and say, I forgive myself for ever telling you anything about it. And now that I have forgiven myself, I will be on my way with the only idea that God has given my assignment that nobody else can do but me. And if I couldn't do it, he wouldn't have given it to me. So I'm not going to go on the other side, that side, and I'm not going to go on this side. I'm going to stop and do what God has, and he tells you more than one time. When it's the real thing, he comes back with that idea. And now you're so shaken up and robbed and the thieves been all through it until you won't even go about what God is telling you to do in order to become what he created you to be. Rich, healthy, happy, joyous. Do you hear me? Yes. All right. The Samaritan. I want you to know who the Samaritans were. They were the despised people. They were the people that people looked down upon. You can't look down on nobody. Who do you think you are? They have the same thing that you have, only you are using yours in a different way. Don't look down on anybody. Remember that when it rains, it rains on the so-called just and on the so-called unjust. The rain just rains. It does not pick out any certain people. I can't rain on you because uh, you've been at CUT since the 40s or the 50s or the 30s or the 20s. The rain don't care nothing about how long you've been wherever you think you've been. What about your heart? What about your spirit? What about your soul? Who do you love? How do you love them? Who is your neighbor? Do you know who your neighbors are? Love every Everybody and everything cause well you know don't you know I just want you to get it straight not only are your friends your neighbor and that's who you just like to consider and close everybody else out that's not the way it goes I know you understand it and if you don't get your Bible and read all about it the parable that Jesus gave us. The fifth plank is recorded in Matthew 5, 43. Matthew 5, 43. There's a saying that goes, love your friends and hate your enemies. But I'm saying, love your enemies 
Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true sons of our Father. It's very easy to be friendly to those that you know and to those that you have a special love for, special love. You know, that's another thing that I have to keep forgiving in my own life and in my own ministry because everybody has taken the idea of the feeling that Johnny doesn't do anything special for me. Like, she don't even call my name. She don't give me no special attention. Well, you're right. Because everybody is special to me. But I do so and so and so, uh, Johnny. You don't know about all the things that I do and I want to tell you about some of the things uh, why I think I should be recognized that you should put up signs or whatever it is they, <laughs> they do and run it in the bulletin in my name and this and that and the other. What I want to say is, if you're doing it for Johnny Coleman, you're doing it for the wrong person. You do whatever you do for Jesus, for the God that keeps blessing you in spite of you. You get your return from God. Whatever you do in this church, please get me out of it completely and do it for God because God is the only one that can repay you. And he does not require you to have to come up on the platform or wherever it is you want to go in here and make your bow and stand up to let people know who you are. I don't care who you are. To me, you are a spiritual being uh, having a spiritual experience in your own way, receiving your assignments from God. And when it comes through me, I am only his channel and his mouth to speak to you, to tell you what he said he wants you to do. God wants you to do it. That's why you are doing it. And God already, you, I can't tell you because you don't know what God has done for me. And I don't know what God has done for you, but it's all because of a law that says, as you give, so shall you receive. Whatever you give to your neighbor, you're going to get it back. Only he knows how to press it down, shake it together, run it to, uh, over. And those of you that's living the life, the, the, the Christ life, you see, we are new thought Christians. And that's the part I think that we forget that we are Christians and think about what Christians do. Well, I'm going to go where they recognize me. Well, God bless you on your way because I'm not going to do it because that is not my assignment. My assignment is to teach God's children, those that want to learn how to live a healthy, happy, joyous, prosperous, healthy, joyous, prosperous life. And that's all that I'm about. Now, when it comes to, you, 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 you can't even pay me off. You can't give me no, no big nothing, because God has already given me all the bigness that I need. So I have to keep praying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I've got to stay according to my level of understanding. And so I just thought I'd share that with you this morning, because if you're feeling hurt 
and your feelings are hurt because I haven't called your name and I didn't tell nobody what you have done. Well, it ain't nobody's business, but God, who cares? You just try to do whatever it is you're supposed to do. What has God told you to do? You do that and don't go around asking nobody if it's right or if it's wrong. They don't know. The lady with the teacup. You're going somewhere asking somebody something about that. They don't know. If they knew, they'd do something for themselves. So I'm forgiving you this morning, not because I want to, but I forgive you because you don't know any better. But I just want you to know what I'm about. Haven't changed very soon. I'm saying 43 years now. One more month, I'll be able to say 44 years of togetherness. They got a new word going, you know, something about fix it. <laughs> anyway, the sixth plank is the, in the forgiveness platform is Peter, you know Peter, how bold he is. One day in his boldness, he asked Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive Jesus? Seven times. And Jesus said, no, Peter, you forgive, what does it say? 70 times seven. You figure that out. To me, it means you forgive forever and ever and ever. 70 times seven is how many times we have to forgive. So now you go back and go over your own thing and see how many times have you forgiven us. Whatever it is, it ain't enough. It's not 70 times seven. That's the forgiveness. And I want you to, don't throw this bulletin away. Work with it this week. Be, remember, you are working with you. Not working for anybody else, but to change you. And if it has changed so many people, don't think you so tough and so rough that it can't change you. It works if you work it. We need to work forgiveness. Forgive everybody. And I do mean everybody. Forgive everybody. And your life will begin again with prosperity in every form. Do you know what I'm saying? Forgive everybody. Got a little long today. Uh, we, Chip, we certainly do appreciate you. We thank you. We appreciate Steve. We appreciate our choir. Fred Nelson is on vacation. So you have to play your song or sing it or whatever y'all going to do after I tell you, while I'm taking up my offer. Okay. Oh, all right.